Cerno Bioscience. In order to understand the Cerno calibration approach, let's first examine the current classical approach to mass spec calibration. First, it is very important to understand that mass spec data is not acquired as centroid data, the stick-like representations of a mass spectrum. Mass spec data is acquired as a continuum and then processed by the mass spec data station or firmware to locate the peaks and present the results in centroid form. The instrument must be calibrated using one or more known standard ions before accurate mass results can be obtained. The standard ions are measured and then their peak location is determined. Accurate location of the peaks ultimately determines how well the calibration performs. Current approaches typically use only the topmost points of the monoisotope peaks to identify the peak's mass position. In addition, the peak picking algorithms are empirically based and can be in substantial error in the presence of noise. Another complication arises from the fact that mass spec data peaks are usually quite asymmetric and dependent upon the instrument tune. Note here, in this example, the substantial lack of peak symmetry. This makes consistent determination of the true peak position difficult when using the traditional approaches, particularly if only a few data points over the top of the peak are used for peak location. Once the peak location is determined, the data is then shifted along the x-axis to its theoretical calibration location. In most instances, the profile data is then discarded along with any information they may contain and the peak position is marked with the classic MS stick or centroid data. Cerno's patented approach to mass spec calibration takes full advantage of the theoretical basis of mass spectrometry to create a proper calibration function. Not only does this approach accurately locate the peak positions, but it also suppresses the noise and, most importantly, corrects the peak shapes to a mathematically defined function. This is made possible due to the fact that mass spectrometry is one of the few analytical measurement techniques where we can accurately calculate a theoretical spectrum. This is possible because we know both the mass of a given ion and the isotope distribution to a very high degree of accuracy. Let's see how it works. First, the calibration standard ion is measured with the data acquired in profile mode. Cerno's calibration can only function with the profile mode data. Once the data is centroided, all the necessary information to do a proper calibration or recalibration is lost. This profile spectrum is the standard from which we will derive our calibration. MassWorks first examines the standard ion and calculates a mathematically defined line shape that closely approximates the measured line shape. For example, it may be determined that the measured line shape is closely approximated to a Gaussian line shape whose half width is 0.32 Daltons. This mathematically defined line shape will now be used as the new target line shape for instrument calibration. Next, knowing the formula for the standard ion, we calculate the theoretical mass spectrum. As mentioned previously, this can be done to a very high degree of accuracy because the masses of the elements are known very accurately as well as the natural abundance of the isotopes. Note that this theoretical spectrum has infinite resolution and the contributions of the different isotopes in the M plus 1, M plus 2, and remaining isotope peaks are quite apparent. However, our real measurement does not have infinite resolution but we know the approximate resolution from our peak shape estimation. Now, if we simply convolve that defined peak shape function with our theoretical spectrum, we have determined the ideal mathematically defined theoretical spectrum. This is our target calibration function. Then, we simply compare this ideal theoretical spectrum against the measured spectrum. From these two functions, we can now derive a calibration equation, which when applied to the measured spectrum gives us back a spectrum that is identical to the theoretical spectrum within the limitations of the noise in the measured data. Once we have the calibration equation, 
We can then apply it to any measured data to obtain a spectrum which is not only calibrated in mass, but line shape as well. It is important to understand that this calibration equation is independent of the calibration ion and truly reflects a correction of the instrument's inherent measurement errors. Once the calibration equation is calculated, it is a simple matter to apply it to the measured data. The calibration is applied to the measured data and a fully calibrated spectrum is obtained. The calibration corrects both the mass position and the line shape of the spectrum to a mathematically defined function. Comparing the calibrated and uncalibrated data, it is clear that the mass position is correct. The line shape is a well-defined symmetric function. And the signal-to-noise in the data shows a significant improvement. The improvement in signal-to-noise is actually not an intent of the calibration, but it is a welcome byproduct of the calibration. Since we now have a known, calibrated line shape, many data analysis steps can be dramatically improved and greatly simplified. For example, the previously described issues concerning peak picking with classical calibration approaches are entirely resolved. Since we have now calibrated the spectrum to a mathematically defined line shape function, we can now locate any peak in the spectrum by fitting it against the exact mathematical function we calibrated with. This is a far superior approach to peak location because it uses all the information in the peak, not just a few points, to give a very accurate estimate of the true peak position. This is one of the reasons that MassWorks provides high mass accuracy, even on unit mass resolution data. Knowing the spectral line shape, also allows highly accurate calculation of the peak height, the peak width, and the peak area. These are all easily calculated because we have calibrated the spectrum to a defined line shape. Note that we can also easily deconvolve the data when the monoisotope peak is not well resolved, or even other interfering ions are present. Another one of the reasons MassWorks can provide accurate mass on unit resolution systems. As we discussed previously, the MassWorks calibration mathematically defines the line shape used in the calibration based on the calibration ion's well-defined theoretical spectrum. So, in addition to calibrating for mass accuracy, we have also accurately calibrated the spectral shape, or spectral accuracy, as well. The spectral accuracy is a powerful metric that can further aid us in compound ID along with the mass accuracy. A simple example of this is shown by comparing the theoretical spectrum of a compound shown here with another compound whose accurate mass is only a few millidaltons away. Relying on mass accuracy alone, it is very difficult to uniquely identify the correct compound, even on a high resolution machine. Fortunately, the second compound contains sulfur, and the resulting isotope pattern is significantly different between the two. So even simple isotope ratio measurements of centroided data can help distinguish. The situation becomes much more difficult when the elemental compositions are more similar and contain the same elements in ratios that are similar. For example, compare another compound without sulfur that is close in mass. Using simple ratio methods or comparing uncalibrated line shape spectra would not allow differentiating between these compounds. In fact, if a formula search is performed with reasonable chemical constraints, the list of possible formula candidates within 3 millidalton is about 25. Even with very high mass accuracy, say better than 1 ppm, there are still four possible formula candidates for consideration. However, since we have calibrated the line shapes with our calibration, we should now be able to accurately compare the measured isotope profiles with the theoretically calculated profiles. Again. It should be emphasized that we can only do this if we have calibrated the spectrum to a mathematically defined line shape. Let's illustrate the concept of spectral accuracy and how it works for compound ID. Here is an uncalibrated spectrum, which we will attempt to compare against a theoretical spectrum calculated using a known line shape. The actual spectrum is quite good, with good symmetry and peak shape. Since we do not know the line shape of the uncalibrated data, 
we must arbitrarily choose a line shape for comparison. We can then attempt to fit the uncalibrated data. One can see that the shapes and positions do not match well. If we calibrate the mass position only, the peak shapes still do not align well. Even after correcting the peak position, it is clear the two profile curves do not align well. The goodness of the fit between the two is a measure of spectral accuracy. In order for spectral accuracy to be a good enough discriminator to effectively differentiate between formula candidates, we must be able to effectively measure differences between the profile as small as a few tenths of one percent. Now, if we compare our calibrated spectrum to the theoretical spectrum, we can see we get an excellent match between the two, indicating excellent spectral accuracy. The match is so good because we know what the line shape is from our calibration, and we use the same line shape to calculate and compare the theoretical spectrum. In fact, the error of the fit is limited only by the random noise of the system and the stability of the instrument between the calibration and the analysis. The goodness of fit between the calibrated and theoretical spectrum is termed the spectral accuracy. It can be expressed as a percentage of the goodness of the fit where 100% is an exact match. Cerno calls this method of calculating spectral accuracy CLIPS, which stands for Calibrated Line Shape Isotope Profile Search. The spectral accuracy is a powerful metric for compound ID. Even in situations where good mass accuracy cannot be obtained, the spectral accuracy can be used to give the compound ID. In many instances, the spectral accuracy is a better discriminator for compound ID than the mass accuracy but in practice both are important and complementary. In summary, by using the Cerno calibration approach, high mass accuracy on conventional unit mass resolution systems is achievable. Compound identification at unit mass resolution is feasible. Calibration and full profile mode MS processing is critical.